I mentioned the various techniques we can use using our thumbs, uh, the noble tool and some of the other tools that are available. They're useful, but sometimes we want to be able to get in a little bit deeper. Now, one of the most effective ways I found of treating trigger points, um, and I can say when I first learned to do trigger point therapy, or I first became a physiotherapy uh, physiotherapist, I started using dry needling. And I found it to be really, really useful to the point that uh, I basically didn't use electrotherapy for years. But you have to have done a course to have done this. And, and this is just to give you an, an idea of how you can use another modality to, to sort of influence the input-output paradigm for low back pain. But to do this, this is not course this is not showing you this is not teaching you to do dry needling anyway there are other courses a lot more in depth and you need to do those and you need to you need to be working according to your licensing and your um, state qualifications regarding that you don't just dry needle because it can be quite uh, uh, invasive and problematic if you're not you don't know what you're doing with it having said that if you do Learn, do dry needling courses, it can be very safe and very, very effective. If you imagine, if you've got a, a layer of muscles like the erector spina and the uh, quadratus and you're not sure you're getting in, you can feel it, you want to get in a little bit deeper or even a little bit more specific. And again, we're not talking about X marks the spot here. With trigger points once upon a time, we tell this is a, the trigger point here for a quadratus lumborum and here and here and here. I don't think you can really do that. On John Sharkey's book, he... Uh, both on dry needling and trigger point treatment, he says you know, he doesn't advocate that X marks the spot because one muscle could easily, easily have a number of trigger points. But if we found areas that we want to trigger point, dry needling can be quite useful. Having said that, the World Health Organization um, recommends the area has to be clean, not recommends states that the area has to be clean. It doesn't have to be sterile. There's some argument about the, the body floor and things like that. But uh, in today's sort of atmosphere, especially with corona and things like that or COVID-19, it's better to just sort of sterilize the area. These little packs of uh, alcohol pads are becoming very, very useful. They cost next to nothing uh, for each one, a um, couple of dollars for a box. And I just clean the area to make sure the whole area is, uh, is sterile. So having cleaned and sterilized the area, and that's, that's my personal preference, I, I would prefer to just go and sterilize the area rather than just washing it. And uh, then I will put my gloves on, as you can see, and I will then take my needle. Now the needles are one-time use. We're not, we've not got an autoclave or anything like that. We take the needle out of its package. They're held in a, a little introducer type tube and a little sort of holder that stops it sliding around. And the needle is going to be able to, to move up and down the tube um, quite easily. I can actually take it out of the tube and slide it back in. I will locate the trigger point. Now, some people use a pen to mark it. Um, I personally prefer not to do that simply for the, the fact that uh, if you stick a needle through a pen there's a chance you tattoo in somebody's back um, and they're going to look like they've got some of these prison tattoos and they're not going to thank you for it. There is an easier way of doing it. You may find that you've got the, the um, trigger point. Now I keep, the, I keep an introducer handy. I've, I've just taken this one out of the, the packet but I keep a spare introducer handy and I just make a little mark on the back. And I'll say to the, where, the point, I think I've got the trigger point, and I'll say to the patient, you're going to feel this pressing. And in actual fact, this pressure of the, of the tube, the introducer, is actually harder. And a lot, if it's uncomfortable and it's not uncomfortable, is uh, more uncomfortable than actually introducing a needle. I've just stuck the needle in there. The needle has uh, gone in. I will then just take it into the point where I feel some sort of grasp on the needle. It's almost you feel like the, the, the muscle is biting the needle. They will often feel a sort of uh, uh, a discomfort. They will say, oh, that's the point. There are different ways of doing this. Some people like pisting it in and out. Some people like twisting it. I kind of, what I do is I go into the, the point where I feel the needle grasp. 
I twist it a little bit and then I just leave it and I leave it for maybe up to two minutes. And then sometimes I come along and just a little bit more twisting, maybe just piston it again. I find that's a lot more comfortable than the pistoning in and out that some people do. That's not a problem. Everybody has their ways of working with it. Some people twist it around, some people do some along the meridians. That's just my, my prefer, preferred way. I find that quite useful. I then remove the needle. I place my finger on it, or if there's any bleeding, the alcohol pad, or a new alcohol pad. I then take the needle, and I put it in a box. I have one of these little ones. Um, they're quite useful to carry, carry around. And then I put it into a bigger box, which I then um, dispose of. So that's just dried needling. It's, it's only a taster. It's just to give you an idea that that exists. I might find different trigger points and I will needle those different trigger points. Again, it's a matter of preference. Some people will use uh, a single needle per trigger point. Some people will just reintroduce the, the needle into the, the introducer and then go move on to the next trigger point. It just depends on, a, on your preference and, and how you're going to be working with it. I, I often will just use a number of needles. Uh, I find uh, patients are more comfortable with that. So that's dry needling. We're now going to move on and talk a little bit about cupping.